Bonjour, mesdames and messieurs. Today, on behalf of my deep love of French fries, I am talking with a French accent. Today, we are going to be making the delicacy of whoopie pies. They are round and brown as toast, or you can make them into a cake, and you put but the cream frosting on them white and fluffy as a cloud that dropped from heaven. <laughs> Today we're gonna make whoopie pies, or whoopie cakes, and as the name implies, whoopie! I am not MogIver, so I have to measure stuff out. In case you're wondering, if you've seen Mama do what I have, with as few ingredients as he's had sometimes, you would understand MogIver. Flour, oh, yeah. and I have to look at the recipe. <laughs> got two sticks of butter, sugar, gonna cream that up. You got two eggs, right back there. In case you can't see them. I'm trying. <laughs> got four cups of flour, one cup of cocoa, vanilla to taste. That's a technical term to taste. Um, salt. Gonna have sour milk now to get sour milk. What you do is you got a cup of sour milk. You take the milk and you leave it out for three days in 100 degree heat. And it'll start to clabber, almost like the yogurt in the store. But you don't want yogurt, so you want to get it at three days. Or you can cheat and use a dash of vinegar like we're going to do. And, and unsoured milk. Yes, unsoured milk. And then you got, what did I say? Ah, two teaspoons <laughs> baking soda into a cup of hot water. It has to be hot water. You're putting that in last and it's got to dissolve. So, cream the sugar in the butter. <laughs> now you gotta cream it together. My hands were pre-washed, for those of you who are, who are wondering. There's only two ways that you cream it like this. One is with just family, two is if nobody else knows. Yes, I know, I know, but what they don't know won't hurt them, so. So are you saying that you're going to share? I have to? <laughs> yes, you have to. Oh, well. Now you got to go wash the butter off. And now you put in the boneless chicken, <laughs> otherwise known as eggs. Those of you who are screaming. Okay, hang on, hang on. That sound was not the boneless chicken. <laughs> that was number one son making a shower up for himself. Because perfect. I'm a little squeamish around raw eggs and meat. I'm gonna go wash my hands real quick. Cut it. About a tablespoon of ACV to a cup of milk. And sorry. Whenever I get in the kitchen, that southern drawl comes out. And especially when you're talking about clabber, right? Think of Jerry Clower. Yeah, when, when <laughs> Jerry Clower years and they just start coming out. Start talking about Marcel and WL and Raynell and Nail and New Jean, Claude and Clovis. And <laughs> now people are going to be running to see who Jerry Clower is. And have, doesn't if know you don't know, I got to stir in the eggs. Right, Flour. And now the salt. Had, had the eggs, now I got the flour, the cocoa, and now we're doing the salt. Butter. A teaspoon of it. Close enough. I need the measurements, I just don't always abide by them. Pour in the soured milk. Which, it does not have to be soured, but... No, we have done it where we haven't even put the vinegar in the milk. That's good and clabbery. You can never have too much vanilla. This will continue to be thick until we get the baking soda and hot water in it. Even then we might need to thin it out a little bit more.
And what happens if you cook the cookies and it's not quite thin enough to your liking? What does the cookie appear? How does it appear? Thick. Well mounded. <laughs> and the texture is a little tough. Okay, so. Right? And if you thin it out, the cookie lies a little flat, flatter and is moisture. All right, so now what are you doing? Just pouring the hot water into the baking soda. And that's unusual right. in a cookie. Usually the baking soda goes right in, but not in this recipe. So that dissolve for a second. Alternately stirring and letting it rest, stir, and let it rest. And this will... I made the mistake before of not doing this. So it didn't come out quite right. <laughs> now is your water, your water, did you say it was hot? Yes. Yeah. The sign of all great cooks, they get messy. At least that's what I've always heard from those who get messy. My mama's favorite kitchen utensil is a... Never been able to find another one of these, have we? Mm -hmm. Some oddly designed batter beater. That is wonderful. Everybody that's watching this is going to say, what do you mean oddly designed? Well, we're at, the, we're at Walmart. Go get one. Send us the link. As you can tell, this well, so, as you, so why are as you, you could using, have tell, it's had a few run-ins with some other objects. So why are you using that now on the dough instead of this one? Break up the lumps. Got to get it nice and smooth so I don't bite into a chunk of flour because that's nasty. So is this thin enough or are you going to thin it out a little more? I think that's probably pretty good. Maybe beat it up a little bit more. And if you cook your Take first to it. batch and it's still too thick, you can thin it out a little bit more, right? Correct. Now, just to make clear, I'm not making fun of the South. I love the South, which is why I do such a terrible Southern draw. It's just your Jerry Clower impression. Yes, Jerry Clower. Andy Griffith, clam, Jerry the, Andy, Clower. It all comes out when I get in the kitchen and I can't control it. It's just because the Southerners are such great cooks, oh, right? Oh, yeah, fried chicken. Fried fish. Oh, it's a bit. Sausage, biscuits, and gravy. And that's probably pretty good. Buttered cookie seed. Important. I learned by experience that way. Uh, pretty much like a regular cookie, just rounded spoonfuls. And there we go. What do you cook it at? Hot. Well, hot. Are you thinking about 400, 350? Uh, Let your mother answer that. Yeah, probably. Go ahead. It yeah. feels a little bit cool. Uh, no, should. actually, you're going to want it about 350. What you don't want is to get the edges. I don't know regular temperatures. I just go by feel like she taught me. Black. Um, if your edges are black, you know that your oven is too hot. Um, with us, we check them within about five minutes of starting, and then if it's too hot, we open our door a little bit. Oh, of course that's on the wood stove. And this is what they'll look like when they're done. Now this is, the whoopie pie is a sandwich, right? It can be eaten very deliciously as a sandwich, yeah. Well, that's, but that's how the recipe does. I mean, you don't have to have it a sandwich, but that's why they, they work so well being fluffy on top. I believe the story goes, they were, I think, made in the 30s to put into lunch boxes. Nice dessert to put into the lunchbox for work. Do it in a sheet cake if you're in a hurry. Which is how we're going to do the rest of it. Again, a buttered cookie seat. Just pour it on out. Isn't it lovely? That's the Whoopi seat cake. <laughs> All right, so the buttercream frosting for this, um, it's just the, I can't remember what size that is, the small packs of powdered sugar, a stick of butter or so, uh, 
Yeah, my hands are washed too. <laughs> Mom, I'm mouse. You need to be as quiet as a church mouse for a little bit longer. Okay. Thank you. Um, just work it in just like you would with any butter into flour. We use organic powdered sugar and the brand we have up here. I have no idea why, but it's it's got hard little chunks in it. So I have to really work it to get those chunks out. Usually with um, the powdered sugar, I think they add like cornstarch to most uh, powdered sugars that are not GMO free or organic. Um, and that helps it to keep from clumping. It's not, it's not a big deal. You just have to spend a little bit more time doing that. So it's just basically your basic buttercream frosting. Nothing special. Uh, for those of you who've never made buttercream frosting, you can see how easy it is. A little messy. But... <laughs> okay, I'm going to go wash my hands. All right. So uh, if you've never made buttercream frosting before, if you don't work with powdered sugar, it does not take much liquid to go overboard. I mean, just a little dab can make you go in the opposite direction. So go sparingly with it. You know, and some buttercream frostings are really thin. I like mine a little thicker. Okay, so um, it's it's not too thick, um, but it can be thinned out a little bit safely. And I usually wait to add my vanilla until I get the milk in because vanilla, of course, counts as liquid and you don't want to overdo it. And I will just... Again, I go by the rule, you can't have too much vanilla. But I don't have any more powdered sugar to add to it to thicken it up. So I have to be somewhat reserved. We're also at the point where I'm going to put my son to beating this. There's a few more lumps in there. With that 21-year-old muscle, I know he can make short work of it. Cake is cool and got the fr frosting on it. I'm only going to do... Half of it today, and hope you enjoyed. <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> Sly is a pretty good baker, isn't he? <laughs> it's the frosty that makes it. Hey, gotta be brown and round as toast, remember? Good day, Michelle! Mademoiselles, today we are going to be making. Just if you're wondering, I am net. Continent. Continent. I'm from. I'm from Quebec. Okay, German. No. From Quebec. And today we are going to be making. <laughs> Whoopie pies. They. <clears throat> it's round and brown as toast. And they are little. And, or you can make them into a cake, a big cake. Ah! Oh, 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 oh. oh. baby, in a big day. And out. Well, we only will let them out. That was very funny. Yep. Hi. Yeah, putting that in. You're all used to seeing Mama standing behind this bowl, but it's my turn today. <laughs>